One, two, three. Good day, beautiful, bountiful, beloved, immortal beings, and good looking people. Remember, you're good looking, which you're always looking for and finding the good. And here you found the goodest good possible, the greatest show about happiness, joy on the internet. Finding happiness and joy with Edwin and Barry. There is no greater show on earth. Welcome. Get ready. Buckle up because you're about to find happiness and joy. Good day, beautiful, bountiful, beloved, immortal beings, and good looking people. Remember, you're good looking because you're always looking for and finding the good. You found good and abundance because you consciously and conscientiously tuned into. Happiness and joy with Edwin and Barry, the greatest show on the internet. Imagine that. Millions and millions and millions of websites. And this is the greatest show on the internet, spanning the world, regarding happiness and joy, which is what every single human being wants. So listen up, because we don't just talk about it. We help you do it. We want everybody to listen. We thank God we're over, I think we're now at 38 or 39,000 people tuning in every, uh, the first and third Thursday of every week. So put it in your calendar for the rest of your life. Because not only do you meet Edwin and Barry and happiness and joy, and we just talk about it, you're going to get practical tips and tools. So my name is Barry Shore. I'm the ambassador of joy. We have Edwin Atterbury, and he is the chief happiness officer. And I'm going to shift right away to Edwin because we have not been together on the show for a number of weeks. And it's actually for a very good reason, because Edwin was visiting his, not only his home country, but his home city, and most importantly, his family. And that's what I'd like to focus on today with Edwin and Barry and happiness and joy. Family as an important aspect of bringing happiness and joy into your life. Now we know, because we're humans, that family can be challenging. By the same token, family is what energizes, what brings about the greatest happiness and joy. So I'm just gonna shift right away over to wonderful Edwin and look at his, uh, uh, piece behind on his wall and just understand that what you're going to do is be introduced to the chief happiness officer and Edwin just take it away and let's use family as our springboard to success. That is so awesome Barry. I am so excited to be here. Like you said, we have not connected. I mean, we, we've talked over the telephone and stuff, but we've not been on the show you know, for some time, yes, I have been in Nigeria and just hanging out with family, taking care of some family business, and especially getting to hang with my 93-year-old mother. You know, it was so exciting and so far. We're going to talk a little bit about that. But before I go into the main gist, though, I want everybody, you know, whether you are sitting down, whether you are standing, whether you are lying down, it doesn't really matter, you know. Just move any part of your body that can move. Any part, okay? You know, because that's, you know, you know, sometimes we take a lot of things for granted, okay? Because a lot of the things that make us happy are the simplest things. The simplest things. It's not like, sure, it's nice to win the lottery. That's great. And it's nice to get that big, nice job. It's okay. It's good to have that big house. And it's nice to get that fancy car. I'm telling you, there's nothing wrong with any of those if that's what you choose to do, okay? Happiness, folks, is the simplest of all. So wherever you are right now, before we kick into gear, I want you to move any part of your body that can move. Just move it. Just move around. Just do. And if you can jump on your feet, jump on your feet. If you can be on your back, but jump on the bed, jump on the bed. Do whatever you can do and tell yourself, I am happy. I am happy. Okay, it's just three, three words. I am happy. Okay. I know initially it might sound like, oh, oh, this is not true. You don't know my situation. I am this and I'm that. Whatever is going on in your life. Let me put it this way. If you can process what is going on in your life, 
that means you still have something to be happy about, okay? You know, so <laughs> I am happy, okay? Because that's how I feel this morning as we get into the gist of what we are going to be talking about. I am happy that I am hanging out with the ambassador of joy, okay? Think about that, folks, you know? You, just think about it. I know <laughs> when I go out in the field, people say, okay, Edwin, happiness or joy, which one it is? Guess what? I am in a position right now where I don't have to choose between either one of them because I can have both of them. How cool is that, okay? I very have cool, very cool. <laughs> so, so I'm excited, I'm happy. And I'm more happy than you are tuned in to listen to us and to just kind of get a feel for what happiness and joy can mean when they're put together. Okay. So, so we are talking about family today. Folks, let's put it this way. Human beings, we are social beings. Okay. That's how we started. Okay. So you want to be happy? Then tap into your family. And then like Larry just said, yeah, you know, family can be tough. <laughs> you know, one of the things my grandma told me, and my grandma lived to like 102 years old, okay, before she left this planet. She said even the teeth and the tongue, as close as they are inside your mouth, they still clash. <laughs> okay, if you've ever bite your tongue, that is a clash, okay? So if there is a clash in the family, it's not the end of the world. <laughs> so it's not like I would never talk to you for the rest of my life. Give me a break. Can you imagine if the teeth said, okay, I would never talk to the tongue anymore. Or if the tongue said, okay, teeth, I'm out of here. I don't want to deal with you anymore. Folks, it doesn't work like that. So we have to always figure out a way to find the harmony in the family. You know, find a way. And yes, when something happened that's really, really tough, and in your head you say, okay, this is it. This is the final bell. That, that, this is the nail. That No, no, no. Take a deep breath. Okay? Change space if you have to. Change space. Give yourself some time out of that environment and cool off. And then go back and assess, okay, where were the wonderful things that we used to do as family? <laughs> And then let, let me uh, let me jump in here and unpack a few things. <laughs> you know, I can just Edwin. keep going so <laughs> it, because it's so wonderful. Again, Edwin was visiting deeply in again native country. We both live in the United States of America. Uh, Edwin comes originally from Nigeria and still has a lot. That's a lot of his family is there. And not just Nigeria, because Nigeria is a large country. And if you don't know where it is, because many people are geographically challenged, look it up. You know, it's it's a in, in Western Africa, it's a major, major country in the world because of its natural resources, because it's a large population ex exceeding 100 million people. 220 and million. <laughs> 120 million? No, 200, 220 Excuse million. me. Exceeds 200 million people. And interestingly enough, it's like that rich in resources, a major oil exporter, but also an exporter and a, be a beneficiary of brains. Nigeria is known for great engineers and such. But the, the real issue is that uh, Edwin was in Benin. And even with all the connectivity that we have in the world, it was still difficult to do uh, online stuff. But I want to go back to what he said hearing that from your grandmother. So first of all, Edwin has great genes, a 102-year-old grandmother, a 93-year-old and still functioning uh, wonderful mother. So yeah. Edwin, we're going to be doing this show for the next 30, 40, 50 years. So this is wonderful. I'm ready. <laughs> I am ready. Yes, let's do it. But I, want to, I want to tell everybody again what that amazing insight from his grandmother Think of family. There is no greater opportunity for social gathering, because we're social animals, he said, and friction, no greater opportunity for friction than with family. But think about it. That friction can ignite sparks, and those sparks could either burn something up or create a fire of joy and happiness. That's how we see everything. Edwin and I always look through the lens of goodness. 
So the, the analogy, the idea of your teeth and your tongue, two closest things in your body, and every once in a while, something's going to happen. You're going to bite your tongue. Does that mean you're going to be angry at your tongue and never use it again? That wow. means you're going to punch your teeth out? Hello? <laughs> it's the idea that family is that which enables you to be the best you. See, this show, when we talk about Edwin and Barry and happiness and joy, yes, those are two sides of the same coin. Think of a beautiful gold coin. Gold coin has two sides. Hello. One side is called happiness. The other is joy. And together, they create the greatest currency in the world. People say to me, I'm asked oftentimes, Edwin, I want you to speak on this. Um, Barry Shore, can money buy happiness? And my answer is absolutely yes. <laughs> you just have to know what the right currency is. Right. The currency is, as Eswin just told us, and again, we're giving out practical tips and tools here. We don't just talk fluff. We talk practical tips and tools. The currency is that gold coin with happiness on one side, joy on the other. And you got already two tips. One is from your his grandmother about the teeth and your tongue. I want everybody to think about that and use I want everybody, you know something? Bite your tongue right now. Now, you're going to do it softly. You're not going to hurt yourself. But yeah. understand what that does. You're not going to get angry at your tongue or your teeth. Uh, Same thing with family, as he said. But, but, but the thing, though, Barry, you know, I'm going to touch on that. But when the teeth bite the tongue, it sends a really shockwave into your system. You know, it's kind of like, whoa, because you don't know where it came from. You know, you think that you will never use your tongue again or the teeth again. But that's only for like a split second when that pain is really high, you know? And then you just take some time, you know, and you let it cool off. And then the, the further you let it cool off, the more you start to realize, okay, the teeth and the tongue are kind of stuck in the mouth. It's going to be play. You know, the moment we feel like, oh, we can just run away, you know, we can just escape, we can just get away, then that creates that gap and it affects that socialness of family. Yes, if it is very intense and you need to give yourself a little space, please do so, okay, you know, for your sanity. But it's not to run away, you know. It's not to, I will never see you again, or I never talk to you again, or I never this again. A part of you is also missing the moment you do that because there are a lot of advantages. Now, you talk about money buying happiness. You know, what my own idea of it is, it's, it's not just the money itself because the money is neutral, okay. You know, if you use money to do important things in your life, if you use money to buy memories, you know, like I, I could not have gone to Nigeria without money, okay? You know, oh, wait a minute, money. wait a minute. Are you serious, Edwin? You mean they didn't give you nobody, the, a free ticket didn't come down from the sky and pay for the whole family to go and eat and power and do all kinds of things? Oh my gosh, you actually had to use money? Yeah, so 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 I wish that was the case, but it was not the case. But yes, you spend money when you spend money like to buy memories, you see the impact of money. You know, one thing talking about family, you know, uh, uh Larry, in addition to spending time with my mom, one of the highlights for the trip was I took a bunch of the children to the ice cream place, you know, and and and, and we were like really like kids in the candy store. I mean, you know, the smallest kid was like maybe two years old and he was running around in the ice cream place. He didn't really care too much about the ice cream. He just cared about running around and just having fun, you know? And everybody have so much fun, you know, just hanging together. And I think that's what family does. And, and so it's very exciting. So when you use money to buy memories, money definitely increases your happiness. As a matter of fact, it buys happiness, okay? But if you just hoard money and you're just storing it just because you want to use it to keep score and you want to be the richest person in the Forbes list just for that purpose, then money loses its sense of value at that particular time. So it's not money itself, I feel like. It's money build hospitals 
money build libraries, money, you know, rescue people, you know, in the middle of stuff. So yes, money can definitely buy happiness. Depends on how you apply it and how you seek it. What do you say about so, it? Let's take a look at this. It's like much like we'll give an analogy of electricity. So if you have in your home uh, an outlet and you have in your hand a plug, well, you can't get, let's say the plug is attached to a lamp. You can turn the lamp on all day long. It's not <laughs> going to happen until you plug in to that electric socket and get that juice flowing. Now, the juice flowing allows you to turn on the light. Well, guess what Edwin and Barry are talking about? We're talking about flowing of juice. Money is one of those things we'll call juice. I mean, that's actually a name in America for money. It's juice, J-U-I-C-E. It's wonderful juice. If you don't have a good relationship with money, you will not enable yourself to have a good relationship with your family. You will not have a good relationship, guess with else, with yourself. Yeah. Once you have a good relationship with yourself and your family, money is a natural result. It, this is so important for everybody to understand. Joy and happiness loves money. Do we love money for money? No, we love money for just what Edwin was talking about. You can buy memories. You can buy experiences. And if you're doing it in the context of family, then it becomes experience. Expansive. Everything about you is expansive. Joy, joy, joy is an acronym, J-O-Y. It stands for journey of you. Your journey is all about memories, love, happiness, peace, and specifically about acquiring those aspects so that you now become the conduit. You're the juice and it spreads to everybody so when you look at your family through the eyes of well yeah okay the human beings guess what so are you <laughs> and not only that you can appreciate that you can now envelop even uncle so-and-so who's always a grouch okay so he's a grouch big deal your sister your brother it's okay let them be what they are as long as you are using your currency. Remember that gold coin, happiness and joy? That's who you are. Yes, always be the best you possible. That's what Edwin and Barry are about. Yeah. The reason you tune in and you share this, we ask you to share this with five people. That's it. So we want to share it. Maybe, maybe, we'll have... maybe 10. Okay, he's a two hand because you know why? Because Edwin is a big guy. He's a two-handed man. It's so, okay. Go to ten. We'll hit. That means we'll be at a hundred thousand within two weeks. And this is really important because we want you to share it, like it, promote it. Because when you become the channel of goodness, cog, channel of goodness, you're also a child of God. And when that happens, there is every every possibility in the world for you to experience happiness every single day. Edwin, if you'd be kind enough, let's have one more tip about living in harmony with family. One more something that really touched you while you were deep in family. So what, what I will say is this, in every family, and, and if, if you are the exception, then you are in great luck okay you are awesome but in every family there's gonna be somebody that just rubs somebody the wrong way okay you know there's gonna be i mean that is just you know and and the bigger the family the chances of that's going to happen okay so here is what i'm going to throw out today and, and this is something that i don't want you to analyze it too much because the moment you start analyzing it then it start getting complicated and then you just lose the essence of it okay so here is what I want to suggest. If there is somebody in your family, you know, close family, long distance family, anybody that you used to relate to, you know, and you guys had a really good connection, or at least you have some connection, it's a family, okay? You know, pick that person's name, maybe one name. Let's do one at a time. Just pick that person's name and really look at it and say, okay, hey, when we were getting along, how much fun did we have, you know? 
what impact has not talking to this person have on my life? Now, you might say, well, you know, I'm a big guy. I can move on. You know, I, I, I didn't really miss out on anything. But that's not the way it works because you don't know what you don't know, okay? You know, so, so, so since we don't know what we don't know, there might be something that could have happened that did not happen. So I would say, you know, maybe not start with a phone call because that might be too drastic and put you in a position where you now have to ask questions and answer a question and stuff. But I would say, you know, start with maybe a test message, maybe a social post. In, in other words, let the person know, you know what, I'm ready to move, you know, closer. I'm ready to put our differences aside. I'm ready for us to become a family again. And, and you take that initiative. Now, they may respond positively. They may respond negatively. That's not your control. You get to control what you can control. And that is to make that decision that you want to reach out. And you may be pleasantly surprised. And you guys will just take it from where you stop, okay? That's what I hope. That's what I wish. And I know that will bring joy and happiness to you and that person and to the whole family. Barry, that's what I see. Oh, so Edwin, I have to tell you three things. Number one, I love you. <laughs> Thank number you. Two, I love you back. <laughs> I, number two, I appreciate you. And, and I number, do too. I and number three, what we just gained is immeasurable because you can't buy this stuff. You can only get it here. This is the juice, kids. This is Edwin and Barry, happiness and joy. Here, let's unpack just a little bit because we don't want to analyze it, but just unpack a little bit what Edwin just shared with us. It's the ability to understand that you can only control one being, you. <laughs> if you reach out to someone that is distant or you think is distant, and by the way, sometimes the you think is distant and they're really not. It just, all it takes is a little bit of a bridge building, even one brick, one stick, just a little bit of a bridge. Like you said, a text message, something, you don't have to go phone call, you don't have to write a letter saying, oh my gosh, I'm not. just a text message, hey, just thinking about you, that's it. And if you get something back that's positive, build on it. And if not, that's okay. You yeah. can only control you. When you understand that you are the essence of your life, then guess what happens? You begin to flow. And when you flow, you're like a flower. That's the beginning of the word flower, right? F-L-O-W-E-R. You become a flower, a flower, and you're now a bridge builder in the world, and it will affect your entire world view. When you can do anything positive with your family, it resonates. It's like throwing that pebble in the lake and you start seeing the ripples. Those ripples don't go away at some point. You say, I don't see ripples anymore. That energy that you put out, and Edwin and I are aligned perfectly on this. We understand because we live it, we share it, we grow with it, we build with it. Your energy cannot be stopped. There's nothing in the world that can stop your energy. No mountain, no river, no barrier whatsoever. Bring out the positive, purposeful, powerful, pleasant essence of you. And guess what happens? It ripples out and it affects everybody. So we only have a few more minutes here, wonderful Edwin. And I am just really loving this because these are practical things that you can do. Remember, we talk about happiness and joy. We are happy. We are filled with joy. We share in this because we want to touch everybody. Now we know that's the nature of life. You're gonna some people will get it, some people won't. That's okay, it doesn't matter. As long as you are doing what you need to do in life, which is spread joy, happiness, peace, and love. Uh, wonderful Edwin, would you be willing to share something about your home city, Benin? Because I can tell you probably not one in 10 million people that are gonna watch this eventually even know anything about Benin. Just give us um, either a childhood memory or something nice in in a minute or so. Just well, something it, wonderful it, it, about Benin. I, I've, absolutely, the list can go on and on and on, but folks, here is the deal. We live in a world right now where technology has made it so easy you know, for us to be so close, even if we are that far away, okay? 
and, and it's called Google, okay? You know, so, so now Benin City, okay, is the very first city in the whole world. Now, that's a big claim, okay? But this is a claim that is supported by genealogists and by travelers, by historians, okay? So it's not, you know, like I can say San Francisco is a city. I can say Las Vegas is a city. I can say London is a city. I can say Lisbon is a city, okay? They are cities. But Bini is the first place to have a city by the name. So, 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 so you would, there is a country Bini, but there is a city that is Bini city. And it has been that for hundreds of years. So, so think about it for a second. You know, to go to a place that is supposed to be like in, in, a, in a quote third world, because I don't believe in that subscription, Okay, but goes back to the 14th century, you know, when, when Portugal and the Benin Empire, you know, were forming a relationship and, and, and the king of Benin was sending somebody to Lisbon and then the king in Lisbon was sending somebody to Benin City and imagine the shock where they first came there and said, whoa, Benin City is the first place that is named a city, okay, <laughs> you know, so so just think about that for a second, and so you can kind of see the history. Now, as we get closer to the end of the year, there is a cultural festival. The whole of December is all it is all activity where the king of Benin starts celebrating. You know, you know all kind of ceremony. You know, I remember as a little kid. You know, we used to wear masquerade and we'll go out on the street and we'll be dancing. You know, and people will be giving us money and stuff like that. And, and so it's just, it's so much fun because it brings the whole family out. And now it's not just your family that's out, but every house you go to visit, the family is out there waiting, you know, to come and be entertained, you know. And, and so you could kind of see the nature of family and family connection when all these things start. So Barry, it's just been a wonderful experience and it's one of those memories. You know, and again... The whole purpose of money is to be able to buy memories and they last lifetimes. So be able to create bridges within family. There's nothing greater. In the United States of America today, there is a disintegration of family because people move and spread out and such. But now, like you said, wonderful, Edwin, the ability to be connected again because of things like the internet and such means that we can be closer still even if we're not physically in the same place. And yet, we could all travel together and have family gatherings and family reunions. When I was growing up, that was the state of the United States of America. And we're going to regain that again. And part of the way of doing that is understanding that currency, that big gold coin that you're holding. And on one side, it reads happiness. The yeah, other yeah, is joy. Because short of time, I just want to add to what you're just saying about how we can all become together again. Right now, you are in Las Vegas in the U.S., okay? And I am in the Sacramento area in the US and yet we are able to be talking to each other as if we are in the same living room we couldn't do this before you know in order to do something like this you have to have a major you know budget you know you have to be a major television show you may have to, but you don't have to you know just with a computer and internet and we can be in the same room you know, we and can, and we're family. sharing and we're sharing with tens of thousands of people. And yes. Edwin says to everybody, share this with ten, so we can touch hundreds and hundreds of thousands. And God willing, by this within a few months, by January of 2024, oh. we'll have a million people that'll be watching and listening, in spreading joy, happiness, peace, and love. So we're going to do two things, Edwin. We're going to do our traditional hug. Hug stands for heartfelt, unlimited giving, and then a blessing. Heartfelt, unlimited giving, and count to three. One, two, three. And our blessing from Edwin and Barry go forth. Live exuberantly. Spread the seeds of joy, happiness, peace, and, and stay happy. Good day. 
beautiful, bountiful, beloved immortal beings and good-looking people. Remember, you're good-looking. You're always looking for and finding the good. And here you found the goodest good possible, the greatest show about